protection, uh, the Middle East, we're going to be sending a relatively small number of troops, uh, mostly protective, and uh, some very talented people are going to the Middle East right now, and we'll see how and we'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be about 1,500 people. All right, 1,500 U.S. troops, uh, protective forces, we're told by the president, going to the Middle East. We don't know exactly where they will be stationed once there, but it follows up on a virtual American armada that has descended on the Persian Gulf to keep a close eye on Iran. The read on all of this with retired Brigadier General Anthony uh, Tata, of course, he's got a book out right now, Reaper Threat Zero, a sniper novel. General, always good to have you, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Great to be with you, Neil. What do you think these 1,500 troops are going to do? Uh, Neil, these 1,500 troops are a request by the Central Command Commander, Joe Votel, who did an uh, intelligence assessment uh, based upon the threat that Iran poses and requested these troops uh, to be sent forward. And, and basically, their uh, missile defense, uh, there's uh, troops to guard the missile defense, there's intelligence collectors, there's signals operators and uh, you know his reference to some very talented people they're all very talented people I think he's hinting that he's probably got some uh, uh, Delta Force seals uh, over there as well to do some surgical things that need to be done uh, particularly in the southeastern part of Iraq where you've got uh, the uh, Quds force the Iranian special forces operating pretty much with impunity uh, in that part of the country. So uh, I, I think there's some surgical strikes that uh, could take place in the dark of night that we won't hear about. And meanwhile, there will be uh, a, a ballistic missile shield uh, that we've already got over there. It's probably being reinforced and troops to protect them as we collect uh, more and better intelligence. Well, if there are surgical strikes, sir, I'm sure we'll hear about it after the fact. And I'm wondering yeah, what true. kind of impact that will have on, let's say, Russia or even in China that has been trying to get a lot of this Iranian oil. What do you think? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, this is a big cause for some of the escalating tensions as reducing or eliminating the waivers uh, on the sanctions. And, and so now people who need that oil, want that oil, uh, can't get it. And, and it's uh, economic warfare that, uh, you know, is simmering into uh, this uh, locked horns uh, militarily. Uh, and we're hopeful that it doesn't uh, get into full-fledged combat. I think this is a very preventive uh, measure called flexible deterrent option that the United States is doing. We have a series of options where you can send a platoon of Marines or you can send a carrier strike group to send a message to flex U.S. muscle and to show that we're serious about uh, peace uh, in the Middle East and securing the free flow of oil and commerce through the Persian Gulf. Well, uh, you know, I, uh, you and I have discussed this before, General. I Markets to see if they're getting worked up about this or worried about it. So far, not. Maybe they think cooler heads will prevail. Maybe they're concerned about the Chinese American trade rift and that that will lead to a global slowdown. I don't know what it is. They're not worried. Uh, should they be? Should they be more concerned that at any moment something could flare up? Well, I, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. I think uh, everybody is uh, rightfully concerned. I don't know that uh, people should be extremely worried about uh, what's happening. I think what you see is. The, the administration with a steady hand on the till, leveraging the elements of national power, military, diplomatic information, economic, and using them as appropriate to get the desired result to achieve strategic aims. So I don't think there's anything rash that's being done here. I think it's all very uh, even-handed, uh, level-headed, and uh, we're trying to achieve, uh, maintain a relative peace in the region, however you define that in the Middle East. And, and then, uh, we're, of course, we're sending messages to North Korea and China and, and other uh, belligerent states that uh, want to compete with us, uh, whether militarily or economically. Uh, it's all about uh, geopolitical positioning in the world stage today. General, thank you very, very much, but more uh, for your incredible service to this country. Thank uh, you, Neil. I think those on the right or left would have to agree. It's pretty impressive. General, thank you again. Happy thank Memorial you, Weekend, remembering all those who, like you, fought for this country, put their lives on the line. Uh, some still alive, many sadly not. Let's not forget that.